Langchain has been around for a year as an open source framework providing the modules and tools needed to build AI applications based on large models. Just a few days Langchain officially announced the new library called Langgraph. Langgraph builds upon Langchain and simplifies the process of creating and managing agents and their runtimes. In this video, we will introduce a comprehensive of Langgraph, what are agents and agent runtimes, what is the feature of Langgraph, and how to build an agent executor in Langgraph. We're going to explore the chat agent executor in Langgraph and how to modify the chat agent executor in Langgraph in humans in a loop and chat. So, what are agents and agent runtimes? In Langchain, an agent is a system driven by a language model that makes decisions about actions to take. An agent runtime is what keeps this system running, continually deciding on actions, recording observations, and maintaining this cycle until the agent's task is completed. Langchain has made agent customization easy with its expression language. Langgraph takes this further by allowing more flexible and dynamic customization of the agent runtimes. The traditional agent runtimes was the agent X class, but now with Langgraph, there is more variety and adaptability. A key feature of Langgraph is the addition of cycles to the agent runtime. Unlike non-cyclical frameworks, Langgraph enables these repetitive loops essential for agent operation. We're starting with two main agent runtimes in Langgraph. The agent executor is similar to Langchains but rebuilt in Langgraph. The chat agent executor, which handles agent states as a list of messages, perfect for chat based models that use messages for function calls and responses. Definitely stay tuned throughout the end of this video. If you guys haven't followed me, I highly recommend that you do so, so you can stay up to date with the latest AI news. Lastly, make sure you guys subscribe, turn the notification, bell like this video and check out previous videos because there is a lot of content that you will definitely benefit from. So that thought, let's get right back into the video. How to build agent executor. Building an agent executor in Langgraph, similar to the one in Langchain. This process is surprisingly straightforward, so let's dive in. First things first, we'll need to set up our environment by installing a few packages, Langchain, Langchain OpenAI, and Tavli Python. These will help us utilize existing Langchain agent classes, power our agent with OpenAI's language models, and use the Tavli Python package for search functionality. Next, we'll set up our API keys for OpenAI, Tavli, and Langsmith. Langsmith is particularly important for logging and observability, but it's currently in private beta. If you need access, feel free to reach out to them. Our first step in the notebook is to create a Langchain agent. This involves selecting a language model, creating a search tool, and establishing our agent. For detailed information on this, you can refer to the Langchain documentation. We then define the state of our graph, which tracks changes over time. This state allows each node in our graph to update the overall state, saving us the hassle of passing it around constantly. We'll also decide how these updates will be applied, whether by overriding existing data or adding to it. After setting up our state, we focus on defining nodes and edges in our graph. We need two primary nodes, one to run the agent and another to execute tools based on the agent's decisions. Edges in our graph are of two types, conditional and normal. Conditional edges allow for branching paths based on previous results, while normal edges represent a fixed sequence of actions. We'll look into specifics like the run agent node, which invokes the agent, and the execute tools function, which executes the tool chosen by the agent. We'll also add a should continue function to determine the next course of action. Finally, we construct our graph, we define it, add our nodes, set an entry point, and establish our edges, both conditional and normal. After compiling the graph, it's ready to be used just like any Langchain runnable. We'll run our executor with some input data to see our executor in action. This process involves streaming the results of each node, allowing us to observe the agent's decisions, the tools executed, and the overall state at each step. For a more visual understanding, we can explore these processes in Langsmith, which provides a detailed view of each step, including the prompts and responses involved in the execution. That's how you create an agent executor in Langgraph, mirroring the functionality of Langchain's executor. 
we'll explore more about the interface of the state graph and different streaming methods to return results. We're going to explore the chat agent executor in LangGraph, a tool designed to work with chat-based models. This executor is unique because it operates entirely on a list of input messages, updating the agent state over time by adding new messages to this list. Let's dive into the setup process. Installing packages. We need the Langchain package, Langchain OpenAI for the model, and the Tavoli package for the search tool. Setting API keys for these services is also necessary. Setting up tools and the model, we'll use Tavoli Search as our tool and set up a tool executor to invoke these tools. For the model, we'll use the chat OpenAI model from the Langchain integration, ensuring it's initialized with streaming enabled. This enables us to stream back tokens and attach the functions we want the model to call. Defining agent state. The agent state is a simple dictionary with a key for a list of messages. We'll use an add to annotation so that any updates from nodes to this messages list will accumulate over time. Creating nodes and edges. Nodes do the work and edges connect them. We need an agent node to call the language model and get a response, an action node to see if there are any tools to be called, and a function to determine if we should proceed to tool calling or finish building the graph. We create a graph with the agent state, add nodes for the agent and action, and set the entry point to the agent node. Conditional edges are added based on whether the agent should continue or end, and a normal edge always leads back to the agent after an action. Compiling and using the graph. After compiling the graph, we create an input dictionary with a messages key. Running the graph will process these messages, adding AI responses, function results, and final outputs to the list of messages. Observing under the hood, using Langsmith, we can see the detailed steps taken by our agent, including the calls made to OpenAI and the resulting outputs. Streaming capabilities. Langgraph also offers streaming capabilities, which we'll explore in more detail in video. How to modify humans in a loop. Let's modify the chat agent executor in Langgraph to include a human in the loop component. This addition allows for human validation of tool actions before they are executed. We'll build on the base notebook we've previously worked on. If you haven't gone through that notebook, I recommend reviewing it first, as this video will mainly focus on the modifications we make to it. Setting up, the initial setup remains the same, there are no additional installations needed. We'll create our tool, set up the tool executor, prepare our model, bind tools to the model, and define the agent state, all as we did in the previous session. Key modification, call tool function. The major change comes in the call tool function. We've added a step where the system prompts the user, that's you, in the interactive IDE, asking whether to proceed with a particular action. If the user responds no, an error is thrown and the process stops. This is our human validation step. Using the modified executor, when we run this modified executor, it will ask for approval before executing any tool action. If we approve by saying yes, it proceeds as normal. However, if we say no, it raises an error and halts the process. This is a basic implementation. In a real-world scenario, you might want to replace the error with a more sophisticated response and use a more user-friendly interface instead of a Jupyter Notebook. But this gives a clear idea of how you can add a simple yet effective human-in-the-loop component to your LangGraph agents. How to modify managing agent steps. Let's take a look at modifying the chat agent executor in LangGraph to manipulate the internal state of the agent as it processes messages. This tutorial builds on the basic chat agent executor setup. So if you haven't gone through the initial setup in the base notebook, please do that first. We'll focus here only on the new modifications. Key modification, filtering messages. The primary change we're introducing is a way to filter the messages passed to the model. You can now customize which messages the agent considers. For instance, select only the five most recent messages, including the system message, plus the five latest messages, summarizing messages that are older than the five most recent ones. This modification is a minor but powerful addition, allowing you to control how the agent interacts with its message history and improves its decision-making process. Using the Modified Executor. The implementation is straightforward. You won't see a difference with just one input message, 
but the essential part is that any logic you wish to apply to the agent steps can be inserted into this new modification section. This method is ideal for modifying the chat agent executor, but the same principle applies if you're working with a standard agent executor. How to use force calling. We'll be making a simple but effective modification to the chat agent executor in Langgraph, ensuring that a tool is always called first. This builds on the base chat agent executor notebook, so make sure you've checked that out for background information. Key modification, forcing a tool call. First, our focus here is on setting up the chat agent to call a specific tool as its first action. To do this, we'll add a new node, which we'll name first model node. This node will be programmed to return a message instructing the agent to call a particular tool, such as the table search results JSON tool with the most recent message content as the query. Updating the graph, we'll modify our existing graph to include this new first agent node as the entry point. This ensures that the first agent node is always called first, followed by the action node. We set up a conditional node from the agent to the action or end, and a direct node from the action back to the agent. The crucial addition is a new node from the first agent to action, guaranteeing that the tool call happens right at the start. Using the modified executor, when we run this updated executor, the first result comes back quickly because we bypass the initial language model call and go straight to invoking the tool. This is confirmed by observing the process in Langsmith, where we can see that the tool is the first thing invoked, followed by a language model call at the end. This modification is a simple yet powerful way to ensure that specific tools are utilized immediately in your chat agent's workflow. And that's a wrap. You know how to build a hyper AI agent. I hope you have gained a cursory understanding of Langgraph capabilities. As a next step, try exploring Langgraph to build more interesting applications. I will leave all these links in the description below so that you can easily access them. It's a great read and it'll give you a lot more understanding as to how they basically accomplish this. So with that thought, I genuinely hope you found it informative and valuable. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more content. Like this, don't forget to click the notification bell so you never miss an update from us. If you have any questions or thoughts, drop them in the comments below. I always love hearing from you until next time. Stay curious and keep learning.